welcome to the first ever push tutorial. I'm Jonathan Stein. You already knew that. Thanks so much for watching. Today we're going to start with just the basics since nobody else has ever talked about this. I just got to show you what to do with the hands, where to put them, how it works, how it's laid out, all the basic stuff, and we're going to get the ball rolling super fast from there. I'm going to show you some super slick, dope sweat stuff very soon. So here we go. First thing you got to know. I'm only going to be teaching you in chromatic mode. There's plenty of people that will show you stuff how to do in diatonic scale mode. Go to town on that. If you want to learn chromatic mode, I'm your boy. You came to the right place. So let's get to it. It's a grid of 64 squares. It's laid out 8 by 8, and each row is chromatic. So going left to right on the bottom row, we've got C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp. Now left to right is always going to be chromatic, no matter where you are. Always half steps apart. You get the idea. Now you go vertically up and down, it goes up in fourths, like this. Always fourths, up and down. the idea. Now if you don't know entirely what I'm talking about, chromatic, fourths, half steps, diatonic, any of this stuff, don't worry about it. You're still going to get a very intuitive feel and idea for what these directions and intervals mean as you get to practice this. So I'm just going to show you how it works anyway and you're going to kind of feel it out with your hands and your ears. Always trust this above anything else. So you're going to find your way, I promise you. So a few other things you want to know about this is there's white and black keys. Now the white and black keys are just like the piano. If you play piano, that is awesome. Everything you know in piano is going to go right onto this. And it's also laid out exactly like a bass or a guitar. Think of each one of these rows as a string and each one of these squares as a fret. As you go up vertically, it goes to a different string, kind of like a guitar or bass, how it goes up in perfect fourths. So each one of these is a string, and each one of these is a fret. If you play guitar or piano, you're going to be killing it on push super fast. So let's talk about some hand positions. The push is shaped very nicely so that each square, kind of like on piano, can fit nicely on one finger. So we're going to start with left hand, and then we're going to do some right hand as well. Take your left hand and create this kind of curved finger cat paw just like I talked about on piano, and put each one of these fingers on a different square on push, like this. And we're just going to do a simple left to right exercise on the first row. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to crawl up, so your hand is not going to move left and right at all. Each one of these fingers is going to always play the notes in its column. So the pinky is always going to play first column, ring finger is always going to play second column, Middle finger, always third, pointer, fourth, thumb, fifth. That rule is unbreakable. That's the law. You have to follow that. And you're just going to crawl up push and go up this big chromatic scale. Let's try it. Up to the next row. Up. Up. Let's keep going. All the way to the top. Yeah, now back down. Awesome. Now as you get good at this, you're going to get faster and faster and faster. Let's just do a quick run through at double speed that, so 16th notes. One, two, three, four. And you get the idea, you can go as fast or slow as you want, speed doesn't matter. What matters is that it's clean and that you're getting into it and that you're having fun so that you'll just keep practicing as much as you need to. So everything I'm going to show you, we're going to mirror on the left and right hand. Let's quickly go through that on the right hand now. It's going to be the exact same, except that the fingers are going to be inverted. Now it's going to be thumb, pointer, middle, ring, pinky. Here we go. Slow up and down.
back down. And so on, fast as slow as you need to. Now the next exercise I'm going to show you, we're going to go back to left hand, is going up and playing a C major scale, which is very easy and intuitive because you're just going to be following the white keys. And once again, each finger is only going to play in its column, so you don't have to move your hand left or right or even really move your hand at all. You're just crawling up and down. You are going to be following the white keys like this. I'm going to do it slow. By the way, when we're doing this one-handed push style, which is actually very useful, sometimes playing push with just one hand is better than with two hands because you have more room to just shred and kind of fly around. Really good for melodic stuff. Chord stuff, that's going to be two hands, and we're going to get to that. Got you, fans. So when you're playing with just one hand, it's kind of good to have the push a little bit on the outside of you so that you're not pivoting too much. You're not twisting your wrist in this uncomfortable way. You want your hand and wrist to be very, very relaxed. So put the push on the outside of you or turn it away from you as much as you need to. So here we go, we're gonna do the scale one more time, a little faster. Yeah, now you may have noticed the way my hand is crawling around on the push is kind of doing like this pivoty thing. So instead of relying completely on finger strength, I'm kind of letting my just whole wrist and hand roll and pivot or bounce around into the pads. It lets you use the full weight of your arm, which is super, super heavy compared to the tiny little finger strength. So you could even just practice this on one row between these three notes, C, D, and E. You actually won't need to move your fingers at all. It'll be kind of like as if your hand was just doing this. It's just pivoting. It's just rocking. And you're just going to go rock. You're just rocking. Rock with me, y'all. Yeah, just like that. So take this, this kind of rocking thing. It's going to feel a little weird at first, but as you practice it, it's going to feel very flowy and it's going to make push playing very effortless. And that is the goal. Effortless with anything. Here we go, we're just going to crawl up the C major scale. Yeah, let's take a quick look with right hand. By the way, for this video, I'm going to be focusing more on left hand. I'm going to leave it up to you to do the mirroring in the right hand. But just for now, I'm going to show you what the mirroring will look like because we're getting started. Right hand, thumb, pointer, middle, ring, pinky. Here we go. Yeah, nice. All right, moving on. So the beauty of the push is that it's isomorphic. Now what does that mean? Isomorphic means that it's symmetric in all ways. Kind of like how if you know a chord or scale in one octave of a piano, you could just go to the next octave and play the same fingering. With push, you could do that, but on any key. So now I'm going to take it to that next level. Everything I'm showing you is always about taking it to that next, 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 next level. We're going to take that same C major. Let's just start with the first octave from this C to this C. All the colored squares are C's, by the way. And we're just going to review it, make sure our hand really knows it. And then we're just going to do that same exact thing, but we're just going to move our hand one square to the right. And now we're in D flat major. Let's see what that's like. Remember, it's got to be the same shape. square again to D major. Same shape. And one more over again to E flat. 
Remember, every time your hand is just doing the exact same shape. Don't even have to think. It's just muscle memory. And now I'm not even going to think about what key it is. Honestly, the goal is when you play music is to not be thinking about what key or scale or modes or rhythms or chords you're playing. It's just going to end up just flowing naturally. Somewhat through your brain, a lot is going to be just the muscle memory, your fingers and hands just intuitively knowing where to go. And both of these combined, body and mind, will converge together and flow naturally to create spirit. And that spirit will just channel itself through music and expression. Real talk. So I'm just going to plot my hand. I'm not even going to look. Let's see where my pinky goes. Fine. And now I'm going to play the major scale. with the right hand so we know what that looks like. Same thing, I'm gonna do the plop exercise. One more time. So once again, start by practicing just in C major and get to really know that shape. And once your hand learns it, which I promise you will happen very quickly, you'll be able to play it in any key won't even have to think about it. And obviously the next step from there would be to do the full up and down scale. So let me just quickly show you what that would look like in D, why not? I picked that randomly. So I promise you, if you practice this a lot in C major, won't even matter what key it is in. So have fun with that. Now the next step from there would be to start practicing some intervals, like thirds. Thirds are really pretty and awesome in all the feely feel ways. So let's just do some diatonic thirds in C. time to practice but once you got it I promise you it's gonna be a game changer for the way you think about music on this thing and you could also practice it instead of chords as a scale so this is kind of like a staircase scale where you go up a third down a step 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 like this quickly do that on the right hand now, staircase style. Remember, once again, with everything I've shown you in this video, you're going to be following that finger to a column rule. So for the right hand, like such, for the left hand, like such. I promise you, if you follow this rule, your fingers and knowledge of push is going to become stupid strong. So just as a bonus, so I can show you something that works super well in push, is easy to play and sounds pretty and beautiful and musical. We're gonna do the big third, the open position third. Some people call this a 10th. 
It's technically a third, but the third is just up an octave. So it's kind of like what we just did, but instead that E is going to be up an octave right here. And we're just going to do these little pairings with thumb and pointer. We're going to break that finger to a column rule. Oops, I lied. Here we go. It looks like this. For this one, I'm going to let you move over. It's right there. And here too. Yeah, so pretty. I love tents. They're so sweet and adorable and cute. So once again, once you learn this, this shape in C major, you can do it in any key. Let's just quickly try that in D flat major. This is what it's gonna be like. So now that we're doing a little bit of this right here, let's see what happens if we get both hands involved just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. So at the beginning of this video, I was just kind of doing some free improv and I was doing this exact 10th tenth, tenth thing with my left hand. And with the right hand, I was just kind of playing freely on the scale. Now remember, we're just gonna do C major, so just don't even trip, just follow along with the white keys here. So for the left hand, I'm just gonna keep it really simple. I'm gonna do whole notes, four beats per chord. Two notes, not really a chord, but a dyad. A dyad! And the right hand is just gonna be sprinkling freely. And by the way, highly recommend hooking up a sustain pedal to the push so that you don't have to just push down all the time and you can just play a note and let it ring, just like a piano. It works amazingly with push, super duper duper recommend. And you get a small one too so you can travel. Come on, peak these sustain pedal vibes though. Woo! All right, here we go. I'm gonna get things a little wet with the sustain pedal now if you don't mind. with the two notes that you're playing with the left hand. You do some kind of same type of arpeggiated patterns just by pivoting the wrist as always, kind of like what you're doing with the right hand. Let's see what that sounds like. And I'm just gonna do two notes with the right hand. Stupid simple, stupid pretty.
That's an introduction to push, the way it's laid out, how to play scales, how to practice with both the left and right hand. Remember, put the hand down, each finger sticks to its column, practice scales and chromatic scales up and down just to get that strength. Practice those thirds, play them together and staircase style. And then practice those tenths just because they sound stupid good and are easy and fun to play. Get really good at C major, then start moving your hand around to other keys because remember it's all the same shapes. It's just about learning them with your muscle memory and then you're just going to be free to play anywhere you want. And then get a little bit of two hands in and just keep it beautiful and simple. Don't overwhelm yourself. Keep it fun, keep it simple, keep it flowy all the time. I do this for fun. There's no other reason to play music and make music than for fun and because it feels good. So do that as much as possible and I promise it will make you a happier, better person. And that's real talk. Thanks again for watching. Catch you next time. Have fun practicing. Much love. Stay Swiss.